Welcome to shul.com. Today we are talking uh, from the Yore De'a, Resh Mem Bet. It's in Shulchan Aruch, and it's Seif over here, Zayin. Okay, so we have Resh Mem Bet, which is 242 in Yore De'a, dash 7. So I'm going to begin it with a story. I was in Brooklyn, and I was in shul on Shabbat. It was like Friday afternoon. We went early to shul to... Uh, learn and while I was learning in shul um, Before like everyone came in there was only a couple of people in the shul and like some one guy came on up to the rabbi and asked him like uh, Like a question on like the chumash It was like a simple a simple question on something and I saw that the rabbi was busy He was like he was like reading something and preparing the class that was gonna start in a few minutes So I quickly like I got the last I'm like yeah, it's, I'm like it's brought down over here. Take a look at the Rashi It's right there and I told him the pasuk so the father-in-law of the rabbi looks at me and he says, how are you answering a question in front of the rabbi? And he tells that in front of me, in front of everyone. I told him, what are you talking about? I said, that's not more halacha bifne rabbo. I said, first, I, I, I just gave him an answer on something the humash. I said, I said, it's not more halacha. And I said, I said, it's not even more halacha at all. What, what, even if I gave a halacha over that in this farim, he goes, what do you mean? I go to Smith for Rash and Yore Dea. I said to him, let me show you. And I said to him, I'll explain to you what Moreh Hala Chabif Now that you corrected me, I'll tell you what it actually means. I said, it said look, take a look. It's Smith for Rash, Yore Dea. Velo Mikre Hora'a. It's not called Hora'a. Ela Keshemore Al Maase Sheba Lefanav. If an action came in front of him, Aval Imish Alu, the Talmud, if they asked the student, Hala Chakidivremi, who's the Hala Chak like? You could say what he, what he knows in his da'at. He's not talking about a ma'aseh that's coming. And then look at het. It's not called hora'ah. It's a simple question and answer. The whole question and answer. That's not called Hora'ah. You're just Baruch Hashem, you're a Tamid Hacham, you're learning, you know the answer. That's not called Moreh Halacha Bifne Rabo, it's not Hayav uh, Mita, which was uh, what the intention was doing. Now, what is Moreh Halacha Bifne Rabo then? What is it then? So, Moreh Halacha Bifne Rabo is a new Halacha that had never existed in the world, and we need a posik to establish what it is. I'll give you some examples in the modern world. Things like uh, solar powered hot water heaters, even though the Gemara talks about hot water, but something like that. Uh, technology of microwaves. How do certain uh, LEDs, how do they work with uh, uh, on Shabbat? Are they the Oraita, the Rabbanan? I remember Rav uh, Yitzhak Levi, the chief rabbi of Neshe, told me, how do you remember LED? LED is Rashi Tevot, Lo De Oraita. LED, it's only the Rabbanan. He gave me a thing on that so you could remember. But what would it also be? Let's look at the two examples. We have two examples in the Torah of Moreh Halakha. One in the Torah, one in the Nevi'im. What's the one in the Torah? You have Nadav and Navihu. That they wanted to bring an Ish Zara. Now, why is that Moreh Halakha? Because they could not have known that from the four. There was no Mishkan. Nobody had ever brought Korbanot like that in, in that capacity. And so when they get made over the Halakha, they literally made a Halakha that never existed and they never had a basis for it or someone that had taught it to them. Therefore, that's more halakha. Let's look at another one, Shemuel. So criteria one has to be a chidush. It's got to be a major chidush and nobody wrote about it. The fact that somebody <laughs> took his time and he learned Shulchan Aruch and he knows Mishnah Beruda and, and he knows how to look it up and someone asked him a basic question and even if he's asking the rabbi a basic question and you answered, maybe it's not the most kavod. I could say that. Maybe it's not the most kavod in that. <laughs> but, but, but it's not Hayab <laughs> Mitah. That's 100% not. It's not more Halakha. Someone halakha. And, and furthermore, what's the other case that we have in the Nivim? We have with Shemuel Hanavi. Shemuel Hanavi goes to, he, he, first his mother goes to Eli. She goes to pray, and Eli looks on the Urim Betumim and says, it looks on it, she, he sees the letters Shin, Chaf, Resh, Hey. So he tells her, you know, stop drinking. You know, Hesiri Yenech. You know, stop with all the drinking and everything, because he saw that she was moving and praying. But only her, o- only her lips were moving. So he, do- he wasn't actually... So obviously, she was doing a prayer which was unique. And so he thought that, you know, she might have been, uh, you know, in- intoxicated or drunk. 
So she says, no, I'm, I'm not drunk, I'm just broken hearted. And at the end, you know, Eli, if you look at, if you look at the Navi, Eli doesn't even ask her what she was praying for. He says, God should give you whatever you asked for. He doesn't actually ask her what you, she was praying for. He didn't say, what are you looking for? You wanna, you want chill? He didn't say that. He said, whatever you're praying for, because he, she made that mistake from Shikora, he made the mistake of Shikora, it was Kesara. He said, because of that, he said, whatever you're asking for, I'm gonna give you. And I'll show you why he didn't actually know what she was praying for, because later on, he, she ends up bringing the baby at three years old, after he finishes uh, nursing and gets a little older and he's already a little bit in, more independent, she brings him to Eli and she tells him, I pray for this boy because I want him to grow up to become a Tamid Hacham, a Navi, to grow in, in Am Israel, and I'm leaving him with you. He's three years old. I'm leaving him with you. I'm going to come during the holidays. I'll come see him on Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. I'll come visit him, but he's staying here. You're now his uh, stepfather. And Eli says, okay, Eli... Eli takes him in, and suddenly, at night, he comes to Eli. He says, yeah, you called me? He says, no, I didn't call you. He says, what do you mean? He said, I said, you called my name twice. He said, no. So he went back, and then he came back again. He said, did you call me? He said, no. So Eli already picked up that this boy is a holy, has a holy soul, and he's going to be big gadol. Okay, what happened? They needed... They were in the Beit Hamikdash, and they needed someone to do shechita on the on the animals. So they were looking for a kohen, because up until this point, this was the Mishkan. It wasn't the Beit Hamikdash. They would only have the kohanim do the shechita. So came Shmuel. Shmuel said, it, "They didn't have Beit Hamikdash and they did shechita." Yeah, because they did it in the Mishkan. The Mishkan was in Shiloh. But the Mishkan was in Shiloh for about four hundred. So the it was before the Beit Hamikdash. Eli HaKohen was before the Beit HaMikdash. Yeah. The Beit HaMikdash was built, built by Shlomo. This was already from Shmuel. It was from before. It was from before. Shmuel and Navi, that was with David. This was from before. So, um, there was, they were at the Mishkan, and the way the Shechita was done was the Kohanim did the Shechita, and then the, the Zad would be Somech. Zad would mean anybody can be Somech, and then the Shechita would, would be him. So, they were looking for a Kohen to do the Shechita, and Shmuel and Navi said, uh, you don't need a Kohen. The pasuk, from the Pasuk, we learned that you, an Azar, anybody can do it. Even Israel can do the Shechita in the Beit HaMikdash and in the Mishkan. So Eli looked at that. He evaluated what Shmuel said, and he said, you're absolutely right. He said, you're right. It, it can be done by Zad. He goes, but, you so, so you're Hayav, he was Hayav Mita, and you that was, that was, that was that, yeah, and this was a literal, he was not only literally right, he actually changed the course of history going forward that now, hey, Yossi, you want to go to the Beit HaMikdash? You can do the Shechita. You can, it can be Somech, you do the Shechita, and then the Kohen will take out the, uh, you know, the Ebarim, the Emurim, whatever has to go into the, into the Mizmeach, he'll take it out. And so right away, Shmuel and Navi, Shmuel and Navi realizes he's Morei Halacha, but he was right. At least says, all right, um, yeah, he's Hayab Mita. They call his mother, and they tell his mother, and at least says, don't worry. I will, I, I, I will bless you that you'll have another child. What? Don't worry about it. Just don't worry. I understand what happened here. It's not a big deal. I'll pray you have another child and everything will be okay. She said, no. I prayed for this one. I know what I prayed for. I know what's coming here. I want this one and have mercy on him, forgive him, and let him stay. You know what? The mother fought for the son. Who's the best fighter for the kids is the mother. And I tell this to my wife all the time. I said, I said if you're not going to fight for the kids and for the family, who, who do you want to do? We learned from Hannah. Look how she came. She came like a warrior. She went to the Kohen Gadol. And she told him, look, I know what you're saying, but I pray to God for this boy. And I want this boy to become the Gadol in Israel. And Shmuel Navi, there was nobody like Shmuel Navi. Shakul, Kim, Moshe, Ve'aharon together. You can't imagine. Moshe Rabbeinu, he was equal to him and his brother together. Shmuel Navi never took anything from anybody. Never took a ride with somebody on his hamur. Never took any food from anyone. He used to travel from place to place. He would take with him his menorah. He had a light so he could learn and teach Torah. He would have some water, some food, and go on his hamur from city to city teaching people Torah. He was a Kohen, Shmuel. So it's interesting that he was giving a halakha that a zar can be make a, 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 do the uh, uh, shechita, but he himself was a kohen. So it's very, very interesting 
from this story uh, that it's not everything is more halakha bifne rabo. And if someone's being put down a talmid for his knowledge of learning because he answered something like this, I think that has to be adjusted. We shouldn't be putting down talmidim that are learning Torah. Obviously, we have to have the right kavod in every situation uh, of teachers and of rabbis, that's for sure. But to put somebody down and tell him is not is not is not true. Uh, well, the way that the reason the way the Torah said it is he speaks about this earlier over here. I can show you. It's the previous uh, seif says he brought down. It's brought down here in the same uh, same mind. So so I'll, I'll tell you why. It, 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 it's mu- it's mu- it's much better than you think. It's not it's not because I don't think it's because about being mevayesh. You need to kill somebody because. He's no, it's not, it's not about being mevayesh yosi. It's, it's more about following the process of new halachot and being posek halachot. Like, for example, everything we do here, we're just learning whatever's written. We're not, and that's why I give you sometimes seven opinions about one subject, because I want you guys to see and understand every single aspect of the learning. It's not, it's not that it should be... Uh, yeah, but even if somebody says halacha, okay, the halacha is this, and he's wrong, you have to kill him? I mean, it sounds like... No, uh, wrong. Uh, what do you mean? If he's wrong, if he's wrong... Muslim, no, what, what, no well, what do you mean wrong? What do you mean wrong? You said he, he was wrong. The rabbi said something, and he said, no, I think this is the halakha. No, that's a little different. That's not what we said here. So what, what is that? We, 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 what we said... No, so what, what did we say here from it happened? Here, the student answered in front of the rabbi. Not that he corrected the rabbi in front of the rabbi. That's not what it said here. That's not at all what, Again, it, said. what it said. It said... It was very simple. It said here... If they're asking, it's okay. It's not that the rabbi got up and then he, he yelled out, no, it's the halakha, it's not like that. And then, by the way, and if, if someone teaches a halakha that's wrong, you can go to him privately and say, hey, listen, this is not what it says here. Can you explain to me how you came up with this conclusion? Yeah, but even if... In front of people, and somebody say something. So what? Okay, so you need to do something, but to kill him? No, so that, that's why I'm, that, that's why I'm telling you. None of those cases are more halacha. I'm telling you, it's not. None of those cases are more halacha. The, the two cases I gave you was Nadav and Avihu with Ish Zara. That's a brand new halacha. never existed. When it came to Shmuel with uh, Azar, anybody can do Shechita in, on, on a Korban. Okay, that's... They ever kill somebody that, because he's a uh, halacha? Yes. The Jewish history? Nadav and Avihu died. They died. Yeah, but nobody killed them. Kadosh Baruch Hu gave him punishment. Yeah, it's it, 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 it's it's hayab mitab. It could be b'dei shamayim. I don't know specifically. I can check, but I know it's it's it's, it's uh there's it's hayab. It could be b'dei shamayim. Now, um. So the only mitab is b'dei shamayim. It's no. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't check that in specifically, so I don't know. Because this case, anyone to kill him. No, so so yes, because he, he was, came to his wife, his mother, and he told him, "I'm going to pray for." But him. he was giving he was giving over a halacha that was brand new. Like today, if someone were to come around around today, uh, just randomly make a new halacha. I don't know. There's a lot of things. Let's say it's te- let, let's say with AI, with technology, with AI, someone comes along and says, uh, "With AI, I don't know. You could be you can do certain things on Shabbat that Shabbat that that uh, sir, right now are not permitted." And he comes up with the thing and he proves that it would be mutad. Yeah, you're gonna kill yeah. him. You're gonna say no. I don't listen. No, to fir- first, first today we don't kill anybody for this stuff at all. There's no bit din. There's no lishkata gazit. We don't have this and we don't do it. We're talking only in the aspect of learning, but. Um, God has many messengers, so as you can send many messengers to get things done. What we're talking about is an individual that was a brand new halakha in front and within a certain uh, location, locale of his rabbi. He brings in the yoreda. He tells you how far it has to be, whether he's alive after he passes away, how many, how much time can you be more halakha. But from what I've seen up until now and learning, I don't think I haven't seen anybody be a more halakha on anything. Because Hamavaja solved almost all the big problems for us. And anytime there's a major issue, it's, it goes to the Gedolim and Etz Israel. They hammer it out in the Beit Deans. They figure out what the Halakha is. And they, and they are, they are Doresh the Halakha. And then we're just teaching over. So if a person is just teaching over what they already had said, okay, it's not more Halakha. And so if there, is there, if there is a person there's that... There's a lot of and people... Yeah, but Mahlakot is not being more Halakha. It's, we have Mahlakot on the Gemara. The, the entire Gemara is Mahlakot from left and right. And 
uh, we're learning actually in our night seder about virt- on virtual halakha. We're learning about how the halakha followed from Moshe Rabbeinu to Yehoshua and how come there's so many arguments. And Harambam brings down that before Hillel and Shammai, there were no arguments. There was no arguments before Hillel and Shammai. After Hillel and Shammai, that's when all the arguments started. There was only, I think the only argument that was in Kalal Yisrael before Hillel and Shammai is the, the discussion of smicha, which was a unique case. Hillel and Shammai only argued on three different things. That's it. Bet Hillel and Bet Shammai, the house of Hillel and Shammai, they argued on tons of things. And then their students, more students, it just, it, it never ended. Until today, we have, we have these, these mahlukot. But the, the differences in opinions always existed. It, it just, even in the past, when there were differences in, of opinions, we just knew which one was the halakha. Today, we just know the opinions. We just don't know always the... We, we didn't always know what was the bottom line halakha before Hillel and Shammai. So today we deduce it and we come up with our halakhot, you know, based on the systems that exist. Yud Gimel Ikarim, uh, Rabbi Ishmael, uh, and, and, and other methods. Baruch Adonai Amen Amin